Hello again. This is Math 2270 coming to you from the College of DuPage. And the title of this lecture is Final Exam Content Guidance and Take Home Problem Statements. As always, please be an attentive listener while watching this video. In your syllabus tab on Blackboard, please make note of two exhibits. One is a copy of these PowerPoints, so you maybe don't have to take as much notes. You can look at the, the notes within the PowerPoint, but also look for a contribution from Jesse Hayes Carver, which talks about when plot for differential equations. This is a nice little program, and this is something Jesse prepared for us. Um, and uh, you'll use that uh, as you uh, work uh, for the take home portion of the exam. So you may want to glance at it. You don't have to use this. If you use something else, that's fine. But this is a nice little tool for you to use if you don't have one already in your uh, toolkit. Okay. Um, your th final exam will be comprised of 13. Uh, equally weighted problems. Ten of these will be ten numbered problems to solve during the proctored session. Uh, some of these ten problems though have multiple parts, so be aware of that. And the topics include solving systems of differential equations, including non-homogeneous systems. So there you go with that. There's a, a problem uh, there type for you. There are two problems dealing with Laplace transforms. Uh, and in fact, I'm going to say verbally that one of them is a transform, the other one is an inverse transform. Um, and so you want to be familiar with those. Green's functions, we will have a problem dealing with that. Power series, there will be a problem dealing with that. Non-homogeneous differential equations. We didn't solve these before the midterm, but we did, and we talked about two ways to do this. We had the annihilator method, and we had variation of parameters. And so that is in play. Be aware of that. Also, there's a problem dealing with Volterra integral equations. Um, and there are cushy Euler problems. Those actually might be integrated into some of these others, but I thought it was important to make note of that. And then we will have problems from the first half that will complete the 10 numbered problems. So these are some of them from the second part of the course. Uh, and then there will be problems from the first half of the course that will complete that. So that's solving a whole bunch of different problems, uh, differential equations, perhaps initial value problems even. Um, there will be three. I'm calling these take-home problems, one dealing with numerical solutions, one dealing with qualitative solutions, and that's where the Jesse Hayes Carver win plot contribution can be useful. And then there's an engineering modeling problem. These will be due at the final and more later on how these will be submitted. So stay tuned. I'm only dealing with content in this presentation. And remember that there is a very significant upside final op exam opportunity. It really pays you to do well in this. Um, the uh, letter grade will be no lower than the letter grade earned on this comprehensive and mandatory final exam. Mandatory means you fail the course if you don't complete the final exam. But it's over the entire course, so I feel comfortable offering this incentive for students to finish strong and do well. At a minimum, your final exam is going to count for one third of your grade. So it's important no matter what. And more later about the submission protocols uh, for uh, all this stuff and, and, and how we're going to handle it. It's going to be very similar to what we did on the, um, on the midterm, but there might be a few uh, modest differences. Okay, um, you're going to be turning this in on with the final exam. And uh, so you consider the very nonlinear initial value problem. Now, this is way nonlinear. And in fact, this defies analytical solution. But what you're going to do is use each of the following techniques with a step size of h equal dot 05 to approximate the value of y evaluated at 0 0.4. So this is numerical. So you're going to do fill out this entire Excel spreadsheet uh, for the various values of t. And we're using the Euler technique here, 
the Hewn Technique, or that's the Improved Oiler, as sometimes it is called. I think they call it this in your book. Maybe they call it Improved Oiler. I'm not sure. But anyway, that's what this one is. The three-term Taylor formula, which is also talked about in your book and in our lectures, and fourth order Runga Kutta. So these are the things that you are filling out for problem number one. And follow all these directions. Do not round off between steps. Keep all available digits in the default mode of Excel. This actually is very useful to do this in Excel, I think, uh, in the interest of accuracy. Uh, and uh, so, uh, you know, cut and paste your final Excel spreadsheet in here, and that will be what will grade it for problem number one. Problem number two, we're talking about the same problem, but we're going to use a direction fields program. There are many direction fields program, but when plot is one of them, to plot the direction fields associated with the differential equation that we had in number one. And use the utility sh to show the particular solutions for a dozen different initial uh, value conditions, including the one that is listed in problem one. Paste a screen capture of the results here and comment qualitatively, this is like an essay question, on the long-term behavior of these solutions. We're saying T is time, and so what happens as time goes off to infinity. And use complete sentence in, in your narrative. And finally, a modeling problem. Uh, so uh, we're, you can assume a, a coordinate system where the origin is a point where the supply pack is released and the positive x-axis is the direction the plane is flying and the positive y-axis points downward. That's a little bit different than what you might normally do, but that's what we're telling you to assume. And assume the horizontal and vertical components of the air resistance are proportional to the square of the velocities. Okay, that makes the problem more realistic. It also makes the problem more difficult. So part A, develop a system of differential equations and initial conditions to model the system for x of t and y of t. Uh, state any additional assumptions in your write-up. So this is an important part of it because you're doing the model. But then using the appropriate model and as engineers using accuracy to the nearest foot, rounding off at the end of the problem, determine the horizontal distance the pack travels, assuming the plane's altitude is 1,000 feet above the ground when it drops the supply pack. Uh, the speed is constant 300 miles per hour. The proportionality constant for air resistance is K is equal to this, and that that's in the correct units. Uh, and the package weighs 256 pounds. And so there's a little picture to perhaps help you. And so this is a very applied uh, system of um, differential equations to solve. Now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. We're all in this together. God bless you all.